Welcome to the Social Stack, your go-to channel for marketing tips based in technology for your real estate business. I'm Amy Stack, and today we'll be covering how to make some prospecting flyers uh, that have some added value for you. Um, so with that, I would love to hear from those of you that are attending, what types of property flyers or prospecting flyers have you made? Any content that you've used in them in the, in the past? What do you think makes a good flyer? For those of you writing later, feel or watching later, feel free to write in the comments too. What do you think is necessary to have on a flyer to make it a good marketing piece? QR code. Ooh, QR code, that's a good one. Something that pops out. Something that pops, okay. Anything else? I like to make sure that Something there's- Something of value. Yes, I love that. That was on my list too. Added value, that helps you stand out from the crowd, right? Some Not general sure. information about the neighborhood. Yes, neighborhood price. info. Perfect, thanks, John. And on top of the QR code, just contact information that's easy to get you. Yes, it's contact information is key. I put um, on my little notes a call to action. So a call to action with some sort of contact information, right? Um, one thing that we've been talking about a lot, if any of you guys are in the pivot shift group on Facebook, it is an open group for real estate. So you guys are all welcome to go check that out. It's just pivot shift on Facebook. Um, we talk about the MOFR, M-O-F-I-R. Has anybody heard of that? What a MOFR is? Do you guys know what that stands for? Uh, no. <laughs> Deb nodding, she's familiar with it. It stands for make offer for immediate response. So that goes right hand in hand with your call to action. So we see a lot of flyers out there or just, just you know, marketing pieces in general, it could be social media. Um, where people are putting out market stats, which is great because it helps people understand that you know the market, but that's it. That's all they're doing. There's no reason for somebody to reach out to you. So you want to make sure that you have something that's going to kind of suck them in and get them to make the next move. Does that make sense? Perfect. Oh, Deb, thanks for putting that link in the chat. Deb put the pivot shift call link right in the chat so you can join on Zoom. It starts at, uh, the pre-show starts at 6. 30 a.m. Central time and the actual, it's not a class, but mastermind, I guess, starts at 7 a.m. Central and the mastermind part is also on Facebook. Um, so you guys are more than welcome to join that Facebook group and or the call. There's lots of amazing resources and ideas that get shared in that and it's Monday through Friday. And James Shaw, who is our, I remember his official title, but basically like he's the head of all the education at Keller Williams now, he leads that call every day. So check it out. All right. I know we're here because I talked about being able to do this in command. Oh, go ahead, Pam. Just one quick question. Um, is that recorded as well, Amy, so that you can, um, and that yeah, is an e are. Yeah. So they, the recordings live, great question. They live right on the Facebook page for that. So if you are a group, if you become a member of the group, there's no fee or anything, you just click to join. All of the calls are recorded right inside the group so you can go back and refer to them as well. Um, okay. Well, what I would like to do is pull up command to just show you how you can make some flyers right in the database. Um, for those of you that were on the class last week, we talked about listing presentations. So this is gonna look similar, but we're just gonna try to shift the focus a little bit. So let me go ahead and share my screen. And if you guys could just give me a nod or a thumbs up, put something in the chat, let me know you can see that. That'd be great. Okay, I got a thumbs up, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna hit home screen here. You don't need this open. Um, when you log into command, your screen will look like this. I've just logged in so far, haven't done anything. And designs is the spot where you want to go to be able to access all those templates. If, if you guys are newer, if you click that red box in the top left, it'll actually open the name of all the applets on the left hand side. Um, but it's that little paintbrush near the bottom that's designed. So that's where we're going to hang out today. And Cross your fingers. This was being a little hinky for me this morning. So we're going to see if this works. Aha, good. It did. Yay. 
I had to clear my cookies. So make sure a couple of pro tips for you guys. Uh, make sure you're using Chrome and clear your cookies if you're running into anything funky. So um, this was just something I had played around with to give kind of a sample to start today. And this one's actually, I think this is a social media graphic, but it's the same idea where you get some stats in here. And I liked the eye-catching photo. Somebody mentioned something about making it pop. This is a pretty kitchen, right? Pretty dining room, living space. People love photos of houses, of cool looking houses. So it's okay to put those in your marketing pieces because they're eye catching. Um, so this is a part that a lot of people ask me about, which is why I wanted to focus on neighborhood stuff today. Um, so let me open one other tab because that was something I already had created. I wanna show you how to start from scratch essentially. We're still gonna to go to designs, but instead of clicking one I've already created, we're gonna to go to the top right and just hit create design. You'll see we have some options, email, social, print, and video. So they're different type of templates for you. And even though I said we're starting from scratch, yes, we have hundreds of templates available for you. And John, I just saw your comment about preferring to eat your cookies. I agree. <laughs> um, so we have hundreds of templates in here. And the beauty of this system is that International has a professional marketing team. So they have designed a whole suite of templates for you. So you're not actually starting from scratch. You absolutely can start with a blank page or a custom size template if you want to. Um, however, why recreate the wheel if somebody's already done the legwork for you, right? So today we're talking about print. So I'm just going to choose print and hit continue. And here it's loading our library of print templates. On the left hand side, you can see we have a whole bunch of different categories. And one of the ones I like for what we're doing today is lead generation and basic business. So if you need to design some business cards or letterhead, that's some good stuff in there. Um, one of the things that we talk about fairly frequently is that we have this new feature, uh, newer um, feature of the personally branded zine. It's like a magazine. So if we have time, I'll pull that up a little bit later. But to keep it simple, when you want to just make that piece that's got some neighborhood info and get it out for prospecting, or um, you want to do door knocking, you want to hang it up at a coffee shop, or you want to bring it to a meeting with somebody, this lead generation section is great. You can see I can just click through and see different options in here. Client love. So there's lots of stuff in there. And all of your property ones, the bulk of them are going to be under uh, listings. So that sample I showed you when I first opened up one, that was a neighborhood snap. There's also some really good ones in local expert. So these ones, you can see there's several options in here. At the top here, we have uh, kind of categorizing by size. So if you know you want a postcard that's portrait, there we go, those are formatted for that already. If you know you want something that's an eight and a half by 11 flyer size, here we go, those are formatted for that correct size for you. Now these ones have spots for you to go find the data. So you would go do a little bit of research on the MLS and you would populate where all those X's are, you're gonna populate the data. With the neighborhood snaps, those are the samples I had pulled up before, let's do flyers. So there's a couple of options here. Why don't you guys put in the chat A or B? Do you like the first one or the second one more? Put A or B and I'll, I'll open that one up. Um, and that has those little snap features that will auto-populate uh, details for you. Tom D says B. A, oh, oh, B. Oh my gosh, you guys are literally every other. <laughs> How funny, okay. I think B set was said first, so I'm gonna go with B. All right, so I'm, all you have to do when you choose the one you want is just hit use. Very simple, hover over and hit that use button in the top. That's too funny. Dave would have had the deciding vote and he said A and B. <laughs> all right, so here's our flyer. And you can see that we have a few different elements in here. Some are things we already talked about. I'm gonna hit this little plus sign to zoom in. 
Okay, so we have a spot already for your information. So we said contact was very important. Value, this could be our added value right here, putting that neighborhood snap in there. Who doesn't love a cute picture of some kids and a puppy playing around? That's a great eye catcher, right? Like, ooh, what's this about? So this flyer does have some information already populated in there. Now, this is written for Barton Hills, and I'm guessing none of us are from that area. So you would want to add your own content in there. And this is the space that you would use to put that MOFR, right? Make offer for immediate response. So you could put something about, do you know your home value? Do you know what your home is worth these days? Uh, and that would be looking for buyers or sellers. Sellers. Yes, exactly. That's the language you would want to use around sellers. Anybody have an idea of what you could put in here to attract buyers? No one wants buyers. Nobody wants buyers. If you did, you could put stuff about the interest rates being great right now, maybe um, how you can get more home for your money right now, and that you as a local expert have resources to help them get into those homes and beat out those other offers. You could or talk to economic, yeah. economic experts are saying there's going to be four interest rate hikes this year, so the time to move is now. Yes. Exactly. So that's a great motivation to get somebody to respond to you right away. Um, but it sounds like most people that had spoke up said they were looking at seller stuff anyway. So definitely use um, the CMAs, the home equity analysis, use that as a way to get people to uh, reach out to you. And you, I know a lot of people are dealing with objections from sellers right now that are like, well, where do I go? right? I want to sell my home. I don't know, or I, I think I want to sell my home. I love that I have all this money that is, you know, my home value has raised so much, but what happens if I sell and I have nowhere to go, right? So you could talk a little bit about your value proposition around that. I wouldn't give away all your secrets, but tease it a little bit about how you have been able to help people and nobody's been homeless yet, right? <laughs> you could put that information in here as well. So I just wanted to cover some of those ideas. You guys can definitely customize those to your business. Um, but once you know what in information you're putting in the center here, you're gonna wanna obviously update your flyer. So I'm gonna kind of just cover some of the basic uh, design tools that you have access to. I do also wanna mention, uh, I said that we have this whole design suite that's already built out. The great thing about that is when you go from one design to another, meaning like if I was looking at that for sale and then I went to an open house, maybe I switched over to social media graphics. The design team has purposely made these um, so that they work together. So you'll see as you flip through the different template options that the branding is consistent. So there's a tuple, couple of different feels of branding in there, but you can usually find the same um, I'm trying to think of a different word for feel or branding, same vibe, I guess, across those different categories. So you don't have to worry about everything matching. It's just done for you. Makes you look more professional. And I'm just gonna kind of go from top to bottom on here to show you how you can edit some of these different things. Does that sound good? All right, so let's say, we're gonna start with color. Let's say you don't want black. Maybe you have a pop of color in your logo or your branding. Once I've selected this, you guys can see that blue outline I trust. Yeah, okay, so uh, that means that that element is selected. And now that I've selected it at the top, I have some little circles that have popped up. That center one, if I hover over it, it says fill color. So I can just tap on that and I get a whole color slide here. And if I know, if I use another program like Canva or Adobe or something, and I know my color coding, I can type that number in there. I can also use this cool little eyedropper feature and say, oh, I really want to match it with this red shirt or maybe that navy in the pant. And you see how that matched it automatically? That's a little pro tip I have for you. I love that eyedropper. And again, you can just choose through any of the colors in here too. I can go like this and say, I want kind of that greenish color and hit apply. And there's my- See, color. you're that good. You entered my question while I was typing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, custom colors. I knew, I was reading your mind, Dave. 
<laughs> so yes, you can definitely do some custom colors in there. I'm gonna make this a little darker because I think it's hard to read that white on the that mint color. So you can do that same coloring on anything. That will work the same when you're on text. I'm going to click on this again. So I use the color fill. You can see next to it, there's actually an outline option. So I can, or I'm sorry, that was, I clicked the wrong one. This is the transparency. So if you want to play the picture bleed through a little more, you can. And the one on the right, let's make it gray. Kind of hard to tell here. You can see at the bottom, now there's a gray outline. And if I could, now that I've made the outline a different color, I can make it thicker and I can play with different like textures. <laughs> stuff. Okay. Ooh, that one's real thick. All right, I'm gonna make that back to navy. So that's just kind of a fun, a fun thing you can do. Um, I really want to emphasize that you guys don't want to spend hours and hours on these. So you don't have to do that. It's just sometimes people ask me about like, oh, I want my box to be outlined. That's how you would do it. For your text, all you have to do is click on the text. You can edit it right here. I personally like to come all the way up to the top and hit this typewriter feature. So I click that and this little uh, drawer opens up on the right hand side and I can type whatever I want here. And just hit save. Um, it's not that hard. We do have our undo and redo buttons at the top. And then hey, Johnny, I need a quick question. Can you yeah. import can you import fonts into command or no? You can. So not from the screen, but yes, you can. So if we have time, I'll show you how to do that too. All right, cool. Thank you. Of course. Hey, Amy, I have a question. Yes. For CMA, like if you want to offer free CMA. Um, yeah. What is the name of the template you recommend? Um, so this, you can use any template you want. This one was called On The Move and you can just put your own text in here about getting the CMA. So if you okay. like this layout, you can totally use this one. Got it. Um, for these, it's the same thing. You just click these text boxes and you can update your name in there. Um, I have my pictures already uploaded into command. So when I click on this person who is not me, I can then hover over my image. And here's the key. I can just click my image and it's gonna drop in place, but then I have to deal with resizing it. It's obviously not in that circle. I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna hit delete. If I click the image that's already in the design and then come to my headshot that I've already uploaded, there's this little circular arrow. And if I hover over it, it says replace image. So if I click on that, it's gonna put my picture right inside that circle. Now, obviously my picture was much longer than the one that was already in that circle. So now if I double click it, I can actually move it around in that circle. So my head's not cut off anymore. And then just hit done at the top. Ta -da! You can do the same thing with the DBA logos. So you'll again have to have your logos pre-populated in here. Let's say I wanna do that gray one. And you can add those. I have, sorry, I just did something without telling you. My logos have the each office is independently owned and operated built in, into them. So all I did was delete that extra line. So it wasn't on the flyer twice. Um, and all of these things, Dave mentioned the fonts. I mentioned my headshot is in there and these logos are in here. Those all get loaded into the same spot and it's called brand assets. So like I said, that's a little different part of designs that I can um, pop over to when we're done with this flyer. Okay, so here's the fun part, our snapshot. Who wants to save some time and not have to worry about going and doing all the research for these numbers yet still have this awesome graphic with some great value adds, right? <laughs> um, again, all you'll have to do is click on it to select it when you are ready to replace that image. But I don't have to click on it to start. So I can be clicked on the text. Click on, the text. on the left-hand side, with our little uh, options here, there's KWLS. So I'm gonna tap on that, it's the little house. And it's defaulted to listings currently. I wanna hit snapshots. So what listings will do is if you guys have a specific address you're pulling um, information about, you can actually get all of the 
property details and the pictures from the MLS. Does anybody have a listing right now? An active listing? I have. What's the address? 1719 Maple Avenue, Hanover Park. Is it two N's in Hanover? No, it's a um, oh, single P. Yeah, I just saw that. And it, H -A -N -O Hanover, Maple Avenue, uh, a, yeah, Hanover, a space sure. park. And, oh, well, usually it pops right. I think oh, there it is. Avenue, maybe Maple yeah. Avenue. Oh, yeah, that's the one. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. So I'm just going to select that. And are these your photos? Yes, these are the photos. So it's all right here. So let's say I didn't want the, the cute kids and the puppy, and we wanted to show this awesome little balcony view. Boom, right in the same place, right? So you can swap out any of your photos like that. I'm gonna feature a laundry room today, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll have access to that. And then at the top, I'm on photos right now. There's also listing details. So if you don't have the MLS pulled up and you're like, shoot, I can't remember, you know, the year it was built or how many square feet are in it, that all pulls up right here as well. Ta-da. So that's the awesome. listing part. So that was all under listings here. Now we're gonna go down here to this little graphic and hit snapshots. And somebody, I was gonna say shout out something, but I have a question for who, or is anybody on here familiar with Nextdoor? Yes. No. Yes. yes. The app, okay, right? So can you, yeah, it's an app. It's a platform. Can you share a little bit about that? What do you know about it? So all we it's do is argue. All, they, all people do is argue. <laughs> what about it, the information that the, the it's platform, a platform provides? for angry agents? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, next door is divided up by neighborhoods, right? But it's not by zip codes. It's by specific areas that people live in. So it's very hyper local. So Keller Williams has an exclusive agreement with them where we actually have access to their neighborhood parameters. So we can pull data for a neighborhood instead of an entire zip code. Because I don't know about you guys, but there's a lot of towns that I know of that like the north side and the south side could have totally different market stats. And if you lump them all together, it's not really giving a true picture of what's going on in that area. And John, you answered my question. He said to try Bud Long Woods. Thank you. And also you asked, will it show pendings? Um, I, they are working on building out pendings and coming soons and all of that stuff now. So I'm not 100% sure if that's up and running, but if it's not, it's coming soon. <laughs> and John, so let's for your try. Speech, though, Bud Long's has a great Nashville hot chicken sandwich. Ooh. Yeah, I know I haven't been there yet, but you know, if you want the best breakfast in Chicago, go to the Bryn Mawr Breakfast Club on Bryn Mawr. There you go. And I'll so meet you there tomorrow. <laughs> Tennessee? Is that what I heard? Yeah, Tennessee hot chicken. Bud Longs is good and uh, fry the coop. Yep. Sorry oh, to get oh, off topic. Uh, but so it's it's okay, we'll get near lunchtime. It's a down there in the middle there, Amy. Bud Long Woods slash Lincoln Square. Okay, so it is in Chicago. It's not in. Okay, yeah. perfect. That was what I want. I was like, is it in Tennessee or no? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so here's Budlong Woods, Lincoln Square, which is the neighborhood John was looking for. And then um, we have a couple of options. We have a vertical stats graphic, the horizontal one, which is what was the placeholder on this flyer. And then we have one that's just the map. So that will come up for any of the neighborhoods. And all you have to do is remember to have that image selected, hover over your replacement one and hit replace. And now we've got the Budlong stats in there. That's so cool. Yeah. Cool. Now, one thing we haven't talked about was the QR code, right? So Dave, you said it would be a great idea to have a QR code, right? Mm -hmm. If you guys didn't know, we all have Keller Williams websites for free. Um, and I don't know, I've never tried this. Budlong, what was it actually called? Oh, here. Oh, yeah. it. Okay, so I'm just pulling up that neighborhood on the Keller Williams website. Okay, 
The quickest way to make a QR code, oh, they updated this, I gotta remember. I'm in Chrome. When you're on Chrome, if you come up to the URL at the top, you see this little send icon, share this page. I can tap on that and then QR code comes up. Mm. So I can click that QR code and hit download. I just created a QR code. So if any of you guys wanna scan that right now, it will take you to the page we're currently looking at. So what page did you go to to do that? I just went to, let me do that again. I went kind of fast. So I just went to the Keller Williams site. I went to a generic one, but you guys want to go to your own website. And okay. I pulled up the Bud Long neighborhood information. Well, now I'm, there it is, neighborhoods right here. So I just clicked on Bud Long Woods, Lincoln Square, Chicago. So now that's taking me to that specific area and it's actually giving me the property information that oops i clicked the wrong one so this is saying there's 14 let me zoom in again on that 14 active 19 pending average days on market average wow. right so if i go to that website here's our 14. i'm sure if i counted those it would equal 14. <laughs> and how accurate is that is that Oh, it's accurate. Yeah, this pulls right from the MLS. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the question I've got there, Amy, is because my neighborhood, it's a mix of single family and condos. Nope. Is there a way to break that? Because that's just showing everything. Is there a way just to like to zero in on detached single family? Gotcha. At this point, it's either uh, purchase or rental. There's not a single family or like okay. apartment, condo, multifamily type of stuff. Um, there are there are other filters that you guys can kind of play around with. There's property type here. So see how there's apartments. Oh, I guess there is townhomes and condos. Just kidding. I lied. There you go. So there's townhomes and condos or houses. So there's only one house. The rest are townhomes and condos. Okay. And if that's what you're going to do on your flyer, say that because obviously these numbers aren't going to match. This is the whole neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So this graphic, it is what it is. But on this screen, let me close that one out. On this screen, you can definitely um, get more detail. That's a great question, John. Okay. So I've created that QR code and I downloaded it. So that's in my downloads folder now. So let's say we're adding something to this flyer, right? I didn't, I don't have a spot for a QR code on here. So if I come to the left, I have an image option. I'm gonna click on images. And at the top, I have an add button. So I can click add, I can click this button here, or if I have something on my desktop or my computer, I can just drag and drop it in. These are all the images that have been associated with this particular design so far. So I'm just gonna drag and drop my QR code right there. And it'll load in. And now I can click on it. This one, because we're not replacing something, you will have to resize it and put it where you want it. So you can put it anywhere on that flyer. And you can say, you know, in this case, we're looking at Bud Long. And do you want more information? Do you want to see what's actively um, selling in your area? Do you want to see what your competition is? Do you want to see what's available? Again, you just got to kind of keep in mind who you're talking to with the flyer. And then you can just have the QR code on there. And when they scan it, it'll come right to this page. Amy, here's How a dumb question. That? If you zoom, yeah way in on that where the little pterodactyl is or the uh t-rex is yep can you add like a logo to cover it up and have the qr code still work oh uh that i'm not sure i've never tried um doing that with this i don't know if the dino is part of the qr code i don't think he is but i'm not 100 percent sure however if you're not in love with that little guy there's lots of qr code websites that are free um, that you can set up an account for or just get a one-time download. You can also pay for QR code sites. Um, I like QR code monkey is one I go to a lot, QR code generator. Okay. So there's lots of just free ones out there and they have different options if you want to customize your color, or throw your logo in or, you know, do fun stuff like that. Do it, like put a house in the center instead of a little Did you say QR, QR monkey? QR code monkey and QR code generator are two that I've used a number of times. Okay. Yeah. I'll have to check those out because I've been using Canva for it. But. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Canva, you can do QR codes in as well. But those are the highlights of the flyer. So you want to have a, you know, some, some purpose behind 
what you're writing in here to have that call to action. And you can have the call to action with a QR code and your contact information in there. Now, if we're looking for sellers and we're talking about home equity, maybe they'd like a complimentary CMA. Um, in our area, you can get a, what is it, cloud CMA, you can get a free um, estimate. So you could do link your QR code to your cloud CMA link if you wanted to. And then the MLS would provide you with the information that the people submitted into uh, that portal. So that wouldn't feed into command, but you would still get their contact information through the MLS. All right, so we talked about a bunch of stuff, you guys, and we didn't even talk about the brand assets yet, but it's already 11.02 and I told you it was gonna be a half an hour class. So how are you feeling? Great, very helpful, Amy. Okay, good. You rock. Very good, really and great. You wanted me to review again real quick before, did I miss anything or go too fast on anything? No. Okay, good thing I it's could take another. I could take another class, when's your next class? Every, uh, so I will, I'm off next week, so no class next week, and then we're going to move to Thursdays. So it will be Thursdays um, at 1030. And Cindy Wendler, our managing broker, is going to be our guest that Thursday. I think it's the 27th. We're going to talk about TikTok, you guys. Are you ready? <laughs> we're going to get out of the KW oh, stuff no. and talk about social media. Okay, if you guys want to hang around for a couple minutes, I will show you that brand asset feature as well. If you have to head out, I totally understand. Um, and I'll keep it all recorded so you can come check it out on my channel. And it's, I'll put it in the chat again, youtube.com slash the social stack. It'll be live at 7 a.m. on Saturday. All right. So thanks for tuning in. And for those of you that do want to stick around, I'm just going to save this. I didn't even talk about how to name it. You just click on this right here was the templated name. I can just click on it and name it whatever I want. What is today? The 12th? Yep. So Amy, if we downloaded it as a PNG and then imported it into like a Canva template that's already set up, would it come out print quality or would it not look so great? I, I believe so. And I know a lot of people will make the flyer um, something in flyer format that they'll then import into an email and use for print. So that way they don't have to create two different pieces. Oh, okay, cool. So yeah, when you hit download, thanks for asking that. You can hit download. We have lots of options, JPEG, PNG, PDF standard, PDF printing. So you've got different download options here. And we also have a share feature so if you want to share to social media, you can click on one of these, or you can just copy this link and you can share this link. Oh, there we go. Oh, cool. And then, I said, Amy, I tried to do that yesterday and um, it just doesn't do anything. It never shows up on social media. I just, I have the links set up. It works sometimes, but I don't know if you've experienced any issues with it. I have not. Are you using these buttons or the link? I use the um, share. Yeah. But are you clicking like Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, or are you actually clicking the link, copying it and pasting it into social media? I use the button. Okay. I have not, I honestly, I usually just use the link. I'm just weird about it. I like to go to social media and do it. It's just my personal. Yeah, that's preference. probably a really good point. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I haven't tested that out. I can't see who's talking. Are you in my market center? Barbara Lewis. Yeah, thank you. I get your emails and I'm here in New Jersey, but um, we have family in New Hampshire. So I'm always tuned in. Oh, awesome. Well, Barbara, yeah. if you have an MCTT at your office, I would definitely touch base with them on that because they can get a tech, so tech ticket, tech support ticket started because if yeah. the team doesn't know that those buttons aren't working, then it's not going to work for anyone. So um, that is definitely something they would want to know about so they can get that corrected. Does it have to be PNG or JPEG for, for sharing like a certain format? Uh, no, it just depends on where you're doing it. Different formats are better for different, um, when I say platforms, I don't, different formats are different, are better for different like media. So like obviously print, you're gonna need PDF. Um, I like PNGs for online stuff. Um, JPEG, like if you're gonna, this is already a flyer, but let's say you were saving something that you were putting on another flyer, a JPEG would work fine for that. 
Um, I might actually tap into Dave. Do you have any thoughts on JPEG versus PNG? Um, I usually PNG think definitely, I think, comes out a little bit more crisp when you're doing some high quality printing. Yeah. And then also, if you're importing images that don't have backgrounds, PNG is the way to go. Otherwise, oh, yeah. JPEG's just fine. I mean, for most so printing stuff. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I usually lean towards PNG, but you can see uh, on the biggest thing um, other than quality is that you can the file sizes will be different. Yeah. So if you're uploading a bunch of images to something, you might want to upload a bunch of JPEGs versus a bunch of PNGs because then the total file when you're done will be easier to manage. Especially if you're going to email it. Yes, exactly. Yeah, the if it's loaded with a bunch of PNGs, it might not load or it might just take a really long time to load because it's such a big file. Thanks, Dave. I knew you would know. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to close out of this screen and I'm going to show you guys how to get those things preloaded in flyers, logos, fonts, stuff like that. Amy, so you do need to be, yes. I have just a very quick question, please. Sure. Um, if you're emailing this, which um, I did an agent announcement yesterday and my email went out and the sender was a KW and then agent number. Yikes. Is there any way to have the sender reflect my name? Uh, no, so I, you're saying when, when I, as a client received your email, it said, it should have said Pam. And then the actual email address is like KW agent one, two, three, four or something like that. Agent one, two, three, four at KW, right? Yeah. Okay, so that email address can't be changed. However, it's important to know that it will say your name on it as long as you have your settings program that way. And when somebody replies to the email, it will go to your KW email or whatever email you've told the system you want to be your reply to email. Okay, um, I think I need to change the setting on it somehow, but um, I can do that in command and demand. That's fine. Yeah, absolutely. All and right. you can just go up to uh, your name in the top right and go to settings and look for command email. And that's where you'll be able to update that. Awesome. Thank you. Of course. Okay. So brand assets. This is how you can preload those frequently used items you're using in your designs. I am just in the design section right now. And I do want you to go ahead and click create design and you can pick either social or print. It doesn't matter which one. I just need to get to the next screen. Once I'm on the template screen, all the way at the top, I have a button that says assets. So you can click on assets and you'll see all these options on the left-hand side. These are things that you can preload into the system. So Dave, if you wanna put champagnes and limousines in there. How'd you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> You can do a couple of things. There are fonts already uh, linked here where you can hit web fonts way on the far right and see if it's something that's a free font that's available if you know what you're looking for or something you want to turn on. You can also, oops, I didn't want to add, ah, <laughs> go away. It's all disappearing. <laughs> um, next to that web fonts, there's a little up arrow. And if you hover over that, it says upload and that's where you can upload your own file fonts. So if you have your own or you go out to something like defont.com, you can get your own fonts there and, and upload them to the system. Awesome. So there's colors and fonts too. If your color palette is not the KW red, gray, black, white, you can add your own colors here. You can just hit the little plus sign. And again, you can do the slider, you can do the eyedropper, you can put your RGB code in there, HSL or your hex codes. So if you don't have colors already, that means nothing to you. You can just pick what you want from up here. <laughs> uh, so that's color palettes and fonts. You can upload images. So that's like my headshots. And actually, I think this one's a little fuzzy. So I'm just going to delete that. And then text. So are there things you find yourself typing over and over again? Let's make it an option to just click and pop into that flyer or graphic for you. So you can add different text fields. Like, I don't know why this is in here. We'll just delete that. But there's my email address, my office, my little taglines, my YouTube channel. These are all common things that I type a lot. 
logos, self-explanatory, upload your logos in there. Elements, Dave, this will come in handy for you. If you guys have some fun like featured elements, maybe uh, like a just sold arrow or you use some fun graphics in your branding. If, if you have, you know, triangles or circles or special lines, you can upload all of those elements into here. Same thing with videos and any other files you might want to have quick access to. Cool. Um, so most of that stuff we saw already, how you can pull it up. I'm going to go, where do I want to go? Templates. And I'm actually going to my designs. We'll just reopen that one I had. Uh, yeah. Okay. So once you program them all into assets under images, you'll be able to see the images you've uploaded. Under text, you'll be able to see the text you've uploaded. So that's under my assets. Under logos, my assets again, you'll see the logos you uploaded. You can see in here too that there's a bunch of KW ones. So if you're um, a luxury agent, if you're in labs, something like that. And now that I'm in here, here's my, my navy, right? Let's say I, ha I have some colors that I just put in there to show you guys. So if I pre-programmed in that brand assets, colors that are custom to my brand, I just hit that brand or that, that color circle. And I'm in the template colors currently, but just above it, there's an option that says library colors. And I have the different palettes that I'll have created in the brand assets will be available. So I don't know if you guys noticed that I had these colors in there before, but that's the color I preset as a brand asset. So I have quick access to those. So then I can be sure that my color matches on everything if I'm not using the standard ones in here. And then of course your fonts will just show up in your font list right here. And I think that's everything. This is a fun button. That's a newer addition. So play with that. That's a whole other thing, though. <laughs> All right, so that was fast, but uh, I think it gets you to the details that you need to know to be able to upload your custom stuff. So does anybody have questions about that? No? OK. Um, what is something somebody learned today? What's an aha? I really cool. liked oh, Pearl. Right <laughs> Everybody talked at the same time. All right, Dave, what did you say? I said that little QR generator, QR code generator at the top of the Google search. Pearl, yeah, awesome. cool. What else? Somebody setting, uh, the, uh, setting the assets, like if you have a tagline. Yes. Yeah, because you don't want to have to type that in every single time. Just let it be programmed in there for you. Save you some time. Who's going to be a neighborhood data? Yes, the neighborhood. That's that's a super fun little feature. Is anybody going to put something into action maybe this week, next week? I'm making flyers. Perfect. Like right Perfect now. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to make flyers in combination with starting up a block club in our neighborhood. So I like it. You guys feel free to send me anything. I love to see what you're doing. It's just, I'll put my email in the chat. Amy Stack at e to p success.com. That stats feature is just so cool because it's so much easier than pulling them yourself. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. home snap. The home yes, snap. about an hour. Learn how to use that a little more. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm glad you guys found some value in today's class. Like I said, no class next week. We'll be back on Thursday. Uh, I believe that's the 27th at 1030 to go over TikTok. So thanks for tuning in.